Yeah, I think that uh, the storyline that this interactive storytelling uh, project is presenting to us reflects uh, some, uh, some of the situations we do face in the fields, especially in complex environments and conflictive settings. I can just give you an example. When one day I have to negotiate with uh, armed groups in order to uh, carry out our activities in the area who are under the control of this armed group without, without compromising our principle of action. When in the scenario, the uh, member of the armed groups discussing, trying to negotiate with the, uh, with the delegates, the way to divide the assistance, uh, not considering only the area where the teams make evaluation, but also to consider the area uh, which under the control of the armed group. I cannot say the context, but personally I uh, face to uh, such situation where they try to influence, they try to, how to say, uh, to bring you to uh, do your job, your assistant, like they want and not like you, you want. For the ICRC uh, scenario, I cannot admit that there are true stories. I can give you an example. Uh, way back uh, when, uh, in my project, when I was uh, coordinating and monitoring on uh, LDP's uh, movement, so it involved frequent movement that I have to go across uh, several uh, checkpoints. At one point, one of the checkpoint guy was asking me for a lift. So with the principle of humanitarian that we don't carry harm persons or uh, on board, so it prompted me to have kind of discussions, negotiations with the persons, uh, how impossible it would be. I, I made him understand in a way that for me to carry an armed guard, putting him on board with me and taking him across the, uh, the, the checkpoint to another place, so the impression would be very bad because when others see, when others see, and then I will not have that same whatever, uh, same objections for them. We want to maintain also that impartiality of humanitarians because we don't want to take part. I do think that some of the dilemmas that arise out of those challenges could be explored further. So what, what, what happens to the other actors in this scenario? What happens to your relationships at a later stage because of some of these decisions you've made when faced with the challenges? It is important for the public to understand what we go through so that they also understand how to relate with us. Our efforts are ongoing. Whenever we, we uh, get to hear of such in, in issues, we take action. This kind of projects or the work that the center does um, is, is key to make sure we have, um, first of all, the support from public and also maybe to remove some of the confusions around what we are doing in the field. It starts to mark how we measure success. Uh, success isn't always delivering the assistance. It may be making very principled decisions uh, long before that and having discussions with your donors, with, with other partners and with stakeholders that have the ability to influence uh, this situation at a very early stage. So I think that essentially presenting these realistic scenarios, as the storytelling project did, allows us a platform or a way to um, sympathise or empathise with someone who's delivering these projects and puts yourself in that position uh, and, and lets you assess how you would, del you know, how would you assess those results, how would you assess the success when faced with such dilemmas. It's worth telling uh, so that the world should know that it's not only a normal uh, living uh, situations for every person uh, that uh, encounter more dangers than uh, humanitarian, because we really go for it. Uh, humanitarian always go to the front line, they go face to face with, their, uh, uh, with the perpetrators, uh, and sometimes uh, uh, making sure that they put their life across the line for the benefit of people who are suffering. <laughs>